it has been one year since I made a video talking about the best commander pairs for free to play players in rise of kingdoms. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys five commander pairs that all free to play players should be working towards. But first what's going on guys. Cheers. Quick reminder, guys, my giveaway is almost over for the month of August. There's going to be a link in the description below. All you have to do is click the link and follow me on social media. That is literally it. And you'll be entered in to win a hundred dollars. Don't wait. The month is almost over. Okay. Now the first thing that I want to talk about in this video is sort of the philosophy that you should be having as a free to play player when it comes to investing in commanders and by that I mean you should not be investing in single commanders and you should not be investing in being a main for any specific troop type now a few weeks ago I made a series of videos for infantry mains archer mains and cavalry mains and I did that because a lot of players ask me for those videos and so I attempt to bring you guys what information I think is the best for those specific players but the reality is that if you are a free to play player you should be playing towards the meta you should not be playing towards a specific troop type and when you're investing in commanders you are not investing in a single commander you are investing in a pair of commanders and you're investing in commanders that are versatile they can be moved from one pairing to another they have longevity they can be used in different game modes because honestly getting your hands on universal legendary commander sculptures is really hard especially as a free to play player you're not going to have that many of these so the best strategy is to save up as many of them as you can and then spend them on one quality pair of commanders that are both commanders that will likely age really well and that will also be able to fit into other armies in the future if one of them does get power crept out of the meta so I want you guys to keep that philosophy in mind as you're thinking about okay should I invest in this pair that Omniarch is recommending do you have the sculptures to use that pair right away does it make sense for your account do you have the equipment to actually use that pair and put them out on the battlefield right there's a lot of questions a lot of things that you have to answer before you spend you know 700 legendary commander sculptures on a single pair right so I just wanted to start the video with that because that is the most important mindset to have when investing in rise of kingdoms and in this video I'm going to be telling you guys sort of what I think is like the minimum amount of sculptures that you can put into a legendary commander to make them viable now that is not objective fact it is just what I feel is the most appropriate for that given commander and whether you want to add more skills to a commander or not will come down to your personal preference and how lucky you get with the distribution of skills because as you guys know in rise of kingdoms you cannot really choose which skills actually get leveled up as you add skill points which is very unfortunate and also the skill reset items I think you can only get if you are buying bundles so free to play players typically at least to my knowledge will not have the ability to use a skill reset you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section below but I'm pretty sure skill resets come with recharge reward events which obviously implies spending with all that out of the way let's talk about the first commander pairing that I'm going to recommend and that is Nevsky with Joan of Arc Prime now when you first enter into KVK 3 and Season of Conquest and beyond this is going to be one of your most important marches if you're only building a single cavalry pairing this is the absolute way to go in my opinion you have massive debuffs and a ton of stats on Nevsky really nice single target damage and then you have just insane AoE damage from Joan of Arc plus the support of nature of her active skill this is like the best of both worlds when it comes to AoE support of nature single target damage and lots of stats it is just a perfectly well-rounded commander pairing and I think that you should really strive to get this out in the open field as soon as you possibly can when you're building this commander pairing obviously you want to take Nevsky to 5511 I think that just getting him just unlocking him and putting him on the field at 5511 is like a game changer for your account when you first enter kvk3 right you only have access to kvk1 and 2 commanders just 190 sculptures a 5511 Nevsky is insane the thing about Joan of Arc Prime is also for 190 sculptures you could do 5115 but the probability of that occurring is really low okay so unfortunately that is the minimum sort of viable build for Joan of Arc 5115 in my opinion this fourth skill being at five is so so good the 100 probability of popping her active skill again is it just basically doubles her skill damage it's it's just insane well really I guess it's 50 percent increase because it only happens every other skill cycle but you get what I mean having the two skill shots is wild okay I would recommend probably bringing Nevsky to 5511 
then attempting to get your Joan to 5115. And then for your Nevsky, you don't necessarily have to then expertise him. Eventually, you will want to, uh, I would say, put four more skills into him after 5511, and wherever they're landing is probably okay. If you really like the third skill, then you can do 5551. I personally think the bonus to skill damage is probably better than the increase in defense here. That's my opinion. And really, both of these skills are really solid in the open field. So if you take them to 5511 and then you just add four more skill points, they're either all going to go in one, all go in the other, or they'll be distributed in some even fashion. It could be 5533, five, three, for example. And I think that that would be perfectly fine. You just get a little bit of both worlds there. I personally think 5515 five, is probably better just because the skill damage with the Joan is insane, right? So that's what I would go for if I were a free to play player. And then if you didn't get the 5115, five, which is probably a majority of you, I would say you probably want to put more skills into Joan of Arc until you can get this last skill to five. That might be really expensive. And I know that that's really hard to do. Some of you might get super lucky. Some some of you might get really unlucky unlucky and you might eventually like expertise Joan of Arc which would actually be tragic hopefully that doesn't happen to you and if you want the best luck possible for this you should drop a thumbs up on the video I heard that it gives you good luck with your skill ups I don't know if it's true or not but you might as well click the button and find out if you get your Nevsky to 5515 and your Joan of Arc to 5115 that is a total of 570 legendary commander sculptures that is sort of like the cheapest that you could build it of course you could do a 5511 Nevsky with a 5115 Joan that is another route that you could go if you want to that would be even cheaper but of course course you'd have to get again really lucky with the Joan of Arc to make it that cheap I will say that if you're a low spender or if you have those skill reset items Joan of Arc is probably the best place to use it in the entire game use the least amount of sculptures possible to get the first and fourth skills to five if it means using skill resets do it when it comes to the cheapest equipment build for your Nevsky with Joan I would recommend a build something like this four purple pieces and two blue pieces obviously you have the windswept boots the talented blue helmet is something that you can keep for a very long time this is a relatively cheap build obviously the weapon with the talent is kind of expensive but use this and fill out the accessories with what you have the next commander pair you probably want to work on is your archers and the reason for that is because you probably expertised isong ye as you were coming up through season one of kvk at least that's what i typically recommend to most players and i think the easiest and cheapest thing that you could do to get your isong ye out on the field in season of conquest is to slap in front of him a 5511 Zhuge Liang. I think that is 190 landed legendary commander sculptures. You get a massive AoE with an insane debuff on the active skill here. You also get 30% archer health, 5% extra damage, and a 50% chance to remove control effects, which are super, super nice. In the past, you had to expertise Boudicca Prime in order to get something similar to this. It's a little bit more powerful, obviously, but it's extremely expensive. Here with 5511, you get it on Zhuge Liang right away. This commander is absolutely insane, but there's no March speed here. Okay, so when you enter KVK3 and Season of Conquest, 5511 Zhuge Liang with an expertise Yi Song Ye, it's going to be super, super slow. You obviously want to come in and grab the double museum relic for Yi Song Ye. This is a slam dunk, easy, no brainer. It's probably the best value you're going to get uh, out of your relic coins. It's 20% defense, 5% skill damage. This is exactly more of what Zhuge Liang wants, which is amazing. So definitely do that as soon as you can and just play really carefully with this March. Okay. Because it's going to have no March speed. So this is a slow moving glass cannon, but boy, will the damage output be absolutely insane. And also this pairing is going to help you a ton in sunset Canyon and lost Canyon because it performs super, super well there. And also things like uh, golden kingdom right so getting more rewards for that event will be really nice for you as well when it comes to the minimum requirement that i would recommend for open field fighting with archers this would be it it's just the revival set plus the weapon and boots i think that it's perfectly fine you can use this in the open field getting it with the talent is great and you'll get the nice little set bonus now here's where you have to consider do you want to move on to building another army or do you want to fine tune your archer march and i think that this is really going to come down to the individual it's going to come down to how you fight in the open field and what your experience is with your Zhuge Liang with YSG okay if you're finding that this March can perform really well despite being so slow out in the open field meaning you're playing really defensively or maybe you're just sending this into like an altar and just dealing insane AoE damage and you're just trying not to get targeted that's fine then this army you can keep and it's going to perform super super well 
if you're finding that you're struggling because of how slow this march is which i think is completely reasonable then you may want to consider putting your ysg on the bench and investing in Boudicca prime i think Boudicca prime at 5551 is fine you do not need to expertise Boudicca prime i made an entire video talking about this already her expertise now that you have Duga Leong in the game is definitely not worth it anymore in my opinion the fourth skill is not it's just it's so so expensive do not expertise Boudicca prime unless you just have a ton of sculptures left over I just don't think it's worth it for most players especially not new free-to-play players what this does do is it gives you a nice little 10 percent boost to your March speed and now you can pair it with Juga Leong again 5551 is 380 legendary commander sculptures so it is kind of expensive here but it will be a little faster in the open field and the debuff on the active skill for Boudicca is absolutely insane it's going to make all of your other armies hit like a truck when they are popping their active skills during this 35 percent skill damage taken increase it's nuts you definitely want to get Boudicca Prime eventually so it's up to you if you want to do it now or if you want to focus on building other armies first some things to consider if you're getting legendary commander sculptures faster than you're building uh sets of equipment then perhaps you want to put the foot on the brakes when it comes to investing in legendary commanders and focus on you know fleshing out your equipment sets and if that's the case then yes I would say go for a 5551 Boudicca pair it with a 5511 Juga Leong and then eventually you do want to try to get a 5515 Juga Leong that is I would say this fourth skill is so so good and yes you do want to expertise him his expertise is incredibly good it makes it so that way his first skill cycle pops this uh AOE on the fourth skill it's really really awesome such a good commander overall right but when it comes to fleshing out your five March lineup uh you know do you want to spend 690 sculptures on Juga Leong or do you want to build a whole other set of commanders right like that's the kind of mindset you have to be in as a free-to-play player building armies for the first time in kvk3 and season of conquest so it's up to you how much time you want to spend on this archer march the cheapest you would do is a 5511 juga leong with ysg expertise i know that's cheap i'm just assuming that you have ysg expertise obviously if you don't have ysg expertise by the way and you're just watching this video 5511 juga leong 5551 Boudicca prime that's it you're good to go leave it there and you're you're chilling okay eventually come back and expertise juga leong or get this fourth skill to five you're good all right but if you did expertise YSG in the early game, the cheapest thing to pair them with is a 5-5-1-1 Juga Leong, in my opinion, and then you can move on. We've talked enough about archers. Let's move on to the third pair that you should be focusing on, and that is building out your infantry army. Now, first of all, obviously, CPO is the way to go. I would say bring them to 5-5-1-1. It's 190 sculptures. You're going to get an insane AoE, massive health debuff, nice attack and march speed here, which is awesome. And you're still going to gain nice stats by just unlocking the third and fourth skill. You're still going to get 10% infantry health. You're still going to gain damage over time 250. You're still going to gain 10% skill damage taken reduction and a nice little shield for you and your allies. So really, really good stuff here on CPO. Once you get him to 5511, you have to consider who you're going to pair him with. Now, if you have by some chance a 5511 Mehmed, uh, I think that's a really cheap slam dunk that you can put behind him and then you're chilling. Okay. I think that's a really good pairing. It's super, super cheap. It's a nice way to get a infantry march out in the field. It's very free to play friendly. If again, you have that five, five, one, one, the med. And if you do, obviously this is the other relic that I think it makes the most sense to invest in. You double relic Mehmed and you get 30% health, 10% skill damage. Amazing for CPO. Amazing. Super, super good. Okay. If you don't have the 5511 Mehmed, you could do a 5511 Martel behind him as well. This is obviously, you know, less AOE skill damage, unfortunately. If you do this, then of course you want to double relic this as well. This is 45% of stats, guys. It is a no-brainer. It's insane definitely definitely do that and if you're a brand new player if you are brand brand new by the time you get to season of conquest if by some chance you have a 5511 pyrus as well this is also something that you could slap behind a cpo prime and that would be perfectly fine in my opinion again you double relic the pyrus uh the double relic here is actually pretty nice this did come out recently uh, but the double relic gives you 30 percent defense 10 percent skill damage very similar to the Mehmed relic of course Mehmed's relic is a little bit better in my opinion but you can't really you know beggars can't be choosers here if you get it for free you get it for free it's amazing if you don't have any of those commanders at 5511 or you're looking for something a little bit more powerful and you have some sculptures to spend then you have two choices the safest choice that you could do would be a sargon at 5550 
do not unlock this fourth skill unless you're going to expertise sargon or if you really want to use sargon as primary you could do that but my recommendation if you want to go the sargon route keep them at five 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 zero do not unlock this okay which means you're not going to put the max stars on him that is something that you you have to consider that the reason for this uh Triscoll gaming did an entire video about it but basically when you unlock this fourth skill you start to remove the odd stacks here which you don't want to do unless you're going to get a lot of value out of it and just by unlocking this the value is not here 500 damage factor it's it's just not here you would rather just keep the stacks on the target so do not unlock this and then boom you have a 5511 cpo 5550 sargon or you could even do a 5510 sargon that would also be a very cheap way to get your cpo out on the field this third skill here does give you some march speed some infantry damage it is a good skill but if you really just want the cheapest way to bring your cpo out into the field 5511 cpo 5510 sargon and that would be the way to go the other route that you could go would be starting to look at guan yu now the thing about guan cpo is that it actually performs really well still okay yes guan yu is slowly getting power crept out of the game but i recently used guan cpo in my latest altar and it pops off boys the skill damage here is tried and true it is an insanely good march the problem with this is the second skill on guan you can't skip this okay so when you're putting skills on him you want a 5155 guan but you just you can't this you're using all your skill resets on joan already right so it's more risky to invest in the guan than ever and that's just the truth so take this with a grain of salt I would say the safe route is going for Sargon, but the double A Leon Guan is amazing. And if you already have him, sure, go for it. That is great. You also could try to do a 5115 Guan, uh, but I mean, again, <laughs> the chances of that are super, super low. Eventually, you do want to put more skill points into your CPO. Uh, this is sort of the same thing like Nevsky. The last two skills are both really solid for the open field. I think I prefer the fourth skill on CPO than the third skill. And the reason for this is because this is reducing the skill damage that you take. And that's a really hard thing to, that's a really good benefit that you can't modify. And what by that, I mean, uh, the infantry health here, like just by unlocking this, you get 10 and you can get more infantry health in other ways. You can get it from the relic on the med. You can get it from runes out in the field. You can get it from upgrading your armaments, right? You can get it from getting a talent on equipment. So there's a lot of ways to get infantry health there's literally like zero ways to reduce the skill damage that you take so I think the fourth skill is better than the third skill very very slightly but the reality is you're going to unlock both and wherever the skills land the skills land it is what it is but if you can get a 5515 CPO I think that's really really good obviously don't use a skill reset here save it for your Joan of Arc Prime and then you are chilling okay and then you're chilling when it comes to infantry sets I want you to consider how much are you going to be investing in your infantry okay if your infantry march is your least important march it's the one that you care about the least then you could consider something like this um by going full windswept you're still gaining a lot of infantry health and you're getting 20 percent bonus march speed which for infantry is very very crucial okay it's super super important i think that this is a really cheap and easy way to get your infantry out into the open field alternatively you could go this route just get all purples except for the blue shield all talented you're going to get slightly less health and no march speed but you're going to have way more attack and defense and so that is you know something to consider it's up to you which of these two that you want to use i personally think that you probably want to just get more stats but there's really something to be said about how cheap you could build this and how amazing the march speed is definitely something that you want to consider okay let's jump over to the tier maker and sort of lay everything out so far at this point in the video you should have some level of nevsky joan some investment in an archer march and some investment in an infantry march if you're gonna ask me you know should i go more in on in archers or infantry i would say go more in on archers i think that makes a lot of sense in other words if you want to save sculptures somewhere save it on your infantry march i would say probably drop the Guan Yu if you can't guarantee skipping that second skill that's just the reality again I'm not saying Guan Yu is bad and in fact I did say earlier that my Guan CPO did insanely well nearly as good as my uh, Nevsky Joan in my altar fight when it comes to trades with enemies so still an incredible March I'm not saying that it's not but I'm saying for you as a new player if you're a free-to-play player getting that Guan to the point that you would want him at is just really risky and hard to do and it could be very expensive whereas the Sargon 
will perform very well as well with your CPO. He's going to age probably better than Guan Yu unless we get a relic out of nowhere for him. And you can guarantee the 5510 or 5550 and you're chilling. Okay. You know exactly how many sculptures you can invest here and you'll be fine. And this is where I want to sort of echo back to what I said at the beginning of this video, because once you have one really good pair for each March, you really want to start to refine what you're doing and you want to save up those sculptures to invest in pairs of commanders. Okay. Because at the point at this point, like, let's say you have a five, five, one, five Nevsky, a five, one, one, five Joan, a five, five, one, one Duleong with a five, 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 one Boudica. And you put this on the bench already. And then you had a five five one five cpo and a five 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 zero sargon if you did that that would be like 1900 sculptures or you know if you're counting like the expertise of ysg it would be like 2210 sculptures okay so i just want to pause here and just have you reflect on how expensive this already is so what you have to take into account is do you want to start to fine tune these refine these get the five 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 one juggle get the expertise juggle do you want to get the expertise uh cpo prime do you want to expertise the nevsky right these are questions that you could ask yourself and it depends on your equipment first of all like can you build a second set of equipment for another cavalry march or another archer march right if the answer is no then you probably just want to start to refine these marches and make them as good as possible okay but if you do want to progress and make a fourth march if you're already here and you're chilling and you like what you have and you're saying omni what do i do next first of all save up hundreds of sculptures and invest in a pair of commanders okay and what i would recommend for that is a 5511 Huo Bing and a 5551 william okay that would be the next pair and this feels a little weird because we have just an expertise ysg sitting here begging to be used okay i know that that's obviously a little bit odd but in my opinion getting the william out there with his supportive nature is just insane you really want william in the open field you want him in your four or five march lineup his supportive nature is insane his debuff is insane the rage regeneration here is super nice he's another aoe commander that you could put out there and he's cavalry which means he's going to be fast than most of the other armies you're going to see out in the field uh there's just so much value out of a 5551 william and so when you think of the fact that okay you definitely want the william in the open field so who are you going to pair him with well huo chi bing honestly if you take a look at his skills 5511 is pretty good uh obviously you know this third skill there's a lot of discussion around the skill um i think just by unlocking this it turns the uh rage requirement to 950 after 30 seconds which I think is fine and again i'm not saying that his expertise isn't worth it or uh, that it's not good obviously you can see that i'm going to expertise him right so i'm putting my money where my mouth is i think this is a good commander but like i would probably rather have a 5515 huo chi bing than the other way around right because here you're guaranteeing cavalry defense you're guaranteeing skill damage and you have the healing factor doesn't really matter um whereas this only occurs in some scenarios guys like you have to be on the map for at least 30 seconds for this to really do pretty much anything and then after that it falls off to just normal attack damage so this skill is again really good in the select scenarios that it actually works uh and i would rather the guarantee stats in my opinion in fact i tried to get this last skill to five but i just got unlucky so that's how that happened but the single target damage on huo chi bing is insane the march speed, speed debuff is going to be really crucial for catching up with your relatively uh, slow archer march and your relatively slow infantry march right and then you can also play around with putting your william with your nevsky and putting your joan behind your huo chi bing and you you know really you just be really popping off with these two cavalry marches and again this would be sort of the cheapest set that i would consider building if you want to have a second cavalry army out in the field i keep flip-flopping as to whether or not i prefer nevsky joan or huo joan i i can't decide i really like the skill damage bonus on nevsky for jones double aoe uh it's just so nice man it's so good obviously huo chi bing performs better with joan but joan's just better than william so however you want to split these up is up to you this pair is tried and true and you're probably going to be using it already so I'll just leave it like this but you could flip these around and of course I have advocated for flipping them around in the past so whichever way you prefer is up to you
again once you reach this point you'll have to go back and see you know do you have enough materials to build a fifth set and i gotta say fielding with five marches for a free to play player is going to be really expensive especially if you're using a mixture of tier fives with tier four it's a lot of free to play players it's going to take a long time to get there and you're going to need multiple farm accounts to you know give you enough resources to do this right so i want to be very clear that like you know running around with five open field marches for any player you know is really really expensive with tier fives so please keep that in mind it's better to have like troop expansions for four marches or three marches than it is to run around with five marches sometimes so keep that all in mind and if you need something to work on while you're working towards that five march you would probably want to do the five you know bring this five five one one huo Chiming to five five one five or eventually work on the expertise for some of these uh you know other commanders that we have talked about i would say you don't need the expertise joan you don't need the expertise sargon you don't need the expertise william you definitely want the expertise Zhuge Liang. you do not need the expertise Boudicca prime for sure so those are some things to think about eventually you could expertise huo Chiming if you want to but definitely he would be last in line out of the nevsky Zhuge Liang cpo prime like he would be last in line for sure and then finally if you are actually in the position to build a fifth march okay and everything else here is is good to go and we're I mean, again we're talking about almost 3,000 legendary commander sculptures at this point depending on how many of them uh, you expertise and how far into each of them you go but if you do want to build a fifth march you definitely want to put your ysg here okay you definitely want to have ysg out in the field if you can get him there uh and who are you going to pair him with well you have a couple options first of all um i I think my opinion is that Nebu's probably the cheapest and easiest to do and he's just very vanilla and safe right now you also could do the Henry uh, obviously that's another choice that you could do um both of these at five five one one uh just to get them out on the field is fine again if we're talking about uh Archer equipment this would be like the minimum Archer equipment that I would recommend for that March uh, I think it's you know this is pretty obvious this is like kind of a no-brainer and I've mentioned this in the past but when you compare Nebu to Henry right I think if you were talking about expertise Henry is definitely better I think the expertise on Henry is insane I love everything about it okay and I'm not here to say that that's not the case the support tree is a little bit tanky I love it okay I love the expertise Henry over the expertise Nebu but if you're not going to expertise either of them and you're just using this to get a second uh you know archer march out in the field to get your YSG out there um I think Nebu is probably the better cheap investment right because at 5511 you get a five target AOE 30 percent defense 15 percent archer march speed whereas if you look at Henry's kit he has a single target damage he does not have a debuff here okay he makes himself tanky no debuff and the second skill here is a spread between attack defense and march speed but the march speed is only outside of alliance territory so it is conditional which is definitely a downside and also i would probably rather have a 30 percent defense bonus than a 20 20 split here and i know that that might sound a little bit weird because this is 40 percent of stats compared to 30 percent of stats but i mean really like when you ask yourself about the nebu ysg and i could say from my experience it does feel a little bit squishy even though you've got a lot of defense here okay so if you reduce the 30 percent to 20 percent with some attack uh on the henry like it's even more squishy now i know that you have like obviously you're a little bit tanky with your active skill on your henry but it's not always going to be there right so does that make up for the fact that you have less defense and it's only for skill damage that's up for you to guys to decide which of uh, whichever of these two you're you prefer then then go for it i do prefer the instant proc damage on henry over the uh, rage debuff on um, nebu i think it's just raw damage it's really nice but the 15 percent all damage bonus here is good so whichever of these two you prefer it's up to you obviously nebu i think has been around longer people do tend to target him more in the open field than henry so there's pros and cons to both of these but the point is that whichever you choose you want to get your YSG out in the field uh your fifth March you, you just want to do that no matter how you do this uh get your YSG out there for your fifth March I think that that would be great and just at the end of the day you're just there to deal AoE damage right massive AoE damage either on both of these two or just YSG it doesn't matter you obviously again you double relic this it's just pure raw vanilla damage and I think having that as your fifth March I mean of of all five of these this is the one that you would drop off first anyway so if you're like running low on troops and stuff like that you wouldn't run this uh but again if you're really pushing it you really want five marches I think this would be a cheap way to uh get your you know your YSG out there with a five five one one of either of these commanders 
and then your Guji. And guys, that's going to do it. That is the five army lineup here. Uh, we have obviously two Cav, two Archer, one Infantry. And here we have the substitutes. These are things that you can slap in as secondaries. If you're missing any piece of the puzzle, I think these are all fine substitutes. They are free that you're going to get over time, depending on how lucky you get. And then here in the extras, we have just choices that you could make for your account if you prefer these over the ones that I have listed here. But these are the best that you could do right now, in my opinion. And if you already have something like this as a free to play player, then first of all, congrats. Second of all, you've probably been playing as long as I have because that's insane. And third of all, if you want to know what to do next and you've already expertise YSG, expertise Huo Bing, expertise CPO, expertise uh, Juliang, and expertise Junevsky. If you've already done all that, okay, then you should not be investing in anything. There is nothing else for you to do. Just hold on to your sculptures, save them, hoard them, wait for the next meta, wait for the next release. And again, only invest in pairs of commanders or a commander that will slide into one of these slots and replace something and then you're good to go for example let's say you're here right you're at this set and you're saving up sculptures you're waiting for your fifth march you're you're building up your armies you're building up your equipment sets right uh and then they drop a new infantry commander pairing uh let's say that one of those commanders is god tier it could be you know the case that you would put that commander with like sargon and then you would do like guan cpo and then you would have uh let's do like this for example then it might be better to do two infantry two cavalry one archer right that could be the case moving forward but we don't know that uh and so you know that's something that you have to think about and what could be coming down the pipeline um so that's why you want to invest in pairs or things that you could slot in and then move around existing investments that's the best way to do this as a free to play player anyway guys if you made it all the way to the end of this video i hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there comment down below your favorite five armies as a free to play player do you run five armies do you run four armies do you run three i would love to hear from you in the comments section below and while you're down there don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said the description will have my giveaway you want to follow me on everywhere there that's all you have to do and you'll be entered to win with that being said thank you so much for watching this has been omni arc i will talk to you guys again soon peace